Hey everyone, welcome or welcome back to Engelbard. I'm going to keep things a little short and sweet here today. I'll be looking at the arcade and NES versions of Data East's overhead run-and-gun shooter, Heavy Barrel. Heavy Barrel used a rotary controller in the arcade, just like Akari Warriors. Except, I like this game a lot better than that one. The levels don't take forever, and it's just a little more intense and more fun to play, and I like the sound better, even though the graphics are not super great for its time. The NES port of Heavy Barrel came along a few years later. I'll have the dates up on the screen here with the specs. And the biggest difference gameplay-wise is the lack of rotary controller support on the NES. So you actually just aimed in whatever direction you pressed the control pad. In the arcade one, this would have really been unwieldy because of the amount of enemies you're swarmed with. But this problem is somewhat mitigated on the NES by the fact that there are almost no enemies on screen. Most of the time, you'll be running around with maybe two or three Sometimes you'll see four pop up, and once or twice, maybe six. But it's a very vacant and empty feeling game. And it, it's still not bad, it's just it doesn't have enough action for the type of game that it is. So we'll jump right to recording methodology here. For the arcade version, I just played it straight through. There was a little hiccup at the end because somehow I lost the footage of me beating the last boss and I had to replay it and capture that and splice it in. For the NES, I did use a few save states here and there just to keep pace with things and uh, try to line it as closely as possible to the arcade game. With that, let's go ahead and bring on the games! Okay, here we go. The arcade and NES versions of Heavy Barrel from Data East. Our opening is pretty similar despite the difference in aspect ratios. The arcade game ran on a vertical display, while the NES version ran on normal horizontal 4x3 displays. And right from the start you can see it's pretty apparent that there's way fewer enemies on screen on the NES version. The NES one seems to top out at typically about 4 as the max. I may have seen 5 one time. And uh, in the arcade one, you can see there's way, way more than that, and uh, they swarm the screen often. I also don't find the power-ups in the NES version to be very colorblind friendly. There's some I had trouble identifying. So you took out that first mini-boss easily on both and picked up the fancy rotating shield. One thing that's really cool with the NES version is how closely they stuck to the stage design of the arcade one. So the layouts are almost identical, even though they're not nearly as populated by enemies. Here comes our second mini boss. And we just took him out on the NES pretty easily. He'll be coming right up in the arcade one as well. Also easily dispatched. And here comes our first boss fight on the NES. Uh, he's going to be really tough, so watch this fight closely. And he's dead. <laughs> Just a couple of shots with the good grenades and he's dead. One interesting thing is that the boss fights on the NES version don't just take place on a plain black background, they take place on a plain colored background. The reason for this is because the larger characters that we're seeing there, the vehicles, in this sense are not exactly sprites, they are backgrounds themselves. And here we are beginning stage two in both versions. Once again, you'll see the layout is extremely similar between the two games. I find these stages on the elevators, these are the ones where it's particularly notable how few enemies there are in the NES version. There's a great example right there. I 
I have to wonder why they just didn't use some tile-based enemies around here, especially the ones that are stationary. I mean, you could have just thrown them onto the map, had them interact a little bit with your bullets, and it would have looked like the game was a lot more populated. See me running around there in the arcade version where I just stopped? That's because if you stand still too long in the arcade one without moving at all or firing or anything, a uh, big quick enemy will come down and kill you. That was their way of trying to spur players along instead of having them just stand still doing nothing. It's ridiculous that that can actually happen during normal gameplay, but it can. in the arcade one there, I managed to assemble the heavy barrel. That gives you unlimited ammo, or basically superpower, for a very short amount of time. The meter at the top of the screen tracks how long you have left. It is kind of unfortunate in either version when you assemble the weapon. And there's a big long stretch of no serious enemies, which definitely happens in this one. It's interesting all the different varieties of grenades and sub weapons. See, we're about to beat the boss in the arcade version. There it goes. We still have a little ways to go before we reach him on the NES version. Oh, there may have been six enemies on the screen at the same time during this section on the NES. Oh, another long stretch of nothing. I was so bored I just decided to move up and down. And finally we get a similar boss. Not quite as fancy looking as the arcade one, but what do you expect from the NES? And here we are about to finally catch up. And here we go with stage three. In the arcade one, a lot of the stages run into each other. So you just finish one and keep on going and another one starts seamlessly. This is one level where you really start to feel the difference in the intensity and amount of enemies. I mentioned those red grenades are awesome in both versions. I feel like I'm not getting accosted by enough minecarts in both versions. Oh! <laughs> 
One other notable thing I'll throw in here now, uh, as you can see I just put the heavy barrel together on the NES version, is that even though the arcade one is on more powerful hardware and has way more things on screen, you will notice if you look that the frame rate is considerably lower on the arcade one than the NES version. It's kind of strange considering a lot of the games of this type used to actually you know, run or at least scroll and have the sprites move at 60 frames per second. Not so with many of Data East's games. This boss is kind of a pain. You gotta have some fancy footwork ready for him. Here we go with stage four. At first glance, you might think, hey, they finally look different, these two versions of the game. The stages aren't quite designed the same anymore. Well, they're still mostly the same. It just takes the arcade one a moment to catch up to where the NES is. You will notice the staircases run in the opposite directions in both versions of the game, however. In case you're wondering, that flamethrower slash fireball gun is definitely the best weapon in both versions of the game. chain weapon slash morning star type thing that you swing around is pretty darn good in the arcade one, but not so great on NES. More useful in the arcade one partially because of how much more enemies there are in it. This time, the staircases run in the same direction. There are heavy barrel assembled again in the arcade one. This was more of an opportune moment for it. Bosses are destroyed in the arcade one pretty much before they even fully get on screen. On well, NES, I had no such luck with getting the heavy barrel yet at that point, but the flamethrower slash fireball gun, whatever you want to call it, makes pretty short work of them also. Stage 5. Coming out of the hole in the wall. Now this is the stage that probably feels the emptiest on the NES versus the arcade one. Look at this super long stretch without even seeing a single enemy. Meanwhile on the arcade one you've got some intensity going on there. Guys just keep coming out. It's kind of hard to believe they didn't find some technical trickery to make it appear that there were more enemies than there were. Other games did that in some ways. This one could have easily. Though NES Heavy Barrel is still fun, but it's just so vacant feeling. I do feel that once again they've done a pretty good job translating the more complicated background onto the simpler specs of the NES. Oh, 
of these elevator levels just seem so long. Pretty long stretch in both versions there with no enemies. The reason it happened in the arcade one is because I took out all those guns uh, relatively quickly. Come on, we're in the home stretch here. great when you get those exploding fire grenades. Not so great when the enemy uses them on you. Still trodden along. The little mine things are super annoying. So I was getting shot in the face with a missile, by the way. Finish the stage in the arcade one. Still chugging along on the NES. A little more on screen there than you usually see in this version. Here comes the boss because our background is nice and plain. As you can see, you can employ the complicated tactic of standing still and shooting at him if you want to. And then suddenly grass grows all over the ground and you defeat the boss. Isn't that nice? A message of hope. Alright, stage six, we are getting there, folks. Once again, the arcade version is just swarmed with enemies. They're all over the place. On the NES one, we've got, like, usually four. Love that little morning star type thing in the arcade one. So far the pace has been really similar between these levels in each version. I do find the strange brightness of the graphics on the NES one a little bit off-putting for this level. I know neither version looks realistic, but this one just seems to be lacking an appropriate level of grittiness. The 
Once again on the NES, we lose the little bit of parallax we see in the arcade version here. Heavy barrel! Yeah, take that! I find this part in the arcade one extremely annoying. I mean, it's fine when you've got the heavy barrel equipped, but just with standard weapons, pain in the butt. I think in this little area here, the graphics on the NES really particularly suffer. Huge difference here is in the arcade one, you'll see we have two of those little mini claw bosses show up and they're on the screen simultaneously. On the NES version, we are not going to see that. These jetpack guys like to swirl around you in the arcade one at an angle in which you can't rotate the joystick to hit them. So you gotta kind of bounce around all over the place to get a good angle on them. Now on the NES I find this level just really painfully slow. There's one of our claw bosses. Can you believe he had the audacity to kill me? What a jerk. In the arcade when we're just about finished off with the boss of this section is three of these big either robotic or armored guys. Finally reached the bottom on the NES. I feel like I only aged about three years waiting for that. Here come our robotic or armored boss characters. And yes, we've only got two instead of three, and that's the end of the level. And here we go, the last level. The music in this level is absolutely fantastic. I particularly love the arcade rendition of it. Sorry I got a little bit ruined here on the NES because I got the heavy barrel and it's super loud. But we'll hear the arcade one in just a second or two and I'll kind of shut up while that's playing. Getting the heavy barrel at that point was not ideal for the NES version because we're going to miss all the boss style fights pretty much. And again, the arcade one is teeming with them. Meanwhile, the NES has hardly anything. All 
Alrighty, on the NES we are approaching the final boss in the entire game. This thing is awful in both versions. <laughs> You have to find just the right perfect spots to stand to avoid being hit by those extendable claws along with the bullets and missiles he fires out. You will see shortly when we reach it in the arcade one here that it's a way tougher fight on the arcade. There, did you enjoy me shutting up for that part of the song? Here comes the final boss in the arcade one. As you can see graphically, they did a really nice job on the NES version, bringing this one over. Of course, it has barely any attacks compared to what we see in the arcade version. The arcade one is also a little less easily predictable, uh, but it's really hard still in both versions. He has gone down on the NES. Hooray! We've almost got him in the arcade version. Oh, we killed each other. Sorry, I had to splice a second playthrough in right there. I somehow lost the footage from the end of the original playthrough. But there it is. We've completed both versions of the game. I don't know about anybody else, but I found this one pretty interesting. It was fun seeing the differences that were caused by the limitations they had to work with on the NES. I will also add, once again, that this is probably my favorite rotary controlled shooter in the arcade. It's a little strange playing on the NES with just, you know, pointing the controller to aim where you want, but I mean, it still works. If it had the same number of enemies as the arcade game on screen at one time, it would probably be a lot more of a challenge to play without the rotary stick. Holy cow, what are you still doing here? That game was like a half hour. All right, well, thanks for sticking around, folks. I really do appreciate it. Now, there's not a lot I can say really any more about this game other than what I said during the commentary throughout it and at the beginning. So I'll just add that I like both versions. The arcade version is good, the NES version is good, but I like the arcade one a lot better. What's nice about this game versus a lot of others is it's not a pure quarter muncher. You can actually practice it and get good at it and that is something I definitely appreciate. And that brings us to the close of another video, my friends. What did you think about Heavy Barrel? Did you play this back in the day? Do you have a preference for the arcade or the NES version or any questions on it? Go ahead and sound off in the comments below. With that, I will say thanks for watching, and see me later!